Hi, I'm electrical engineer Eric Steyers. And I'm physicist William Coniglio. And, and this, this is, is the, the amazing, amazing quarter, quarter shrinking, shrinking machine. machine. This really cool device uses a powerful burst of magnetic field to shrink a standard U.S. quarter to the size of a dime. As if electromagnetically smashing a piece of metal weren't enough, this demonstration also includes high voltage, a plasma arc, a loud explosion, and stinky smoke. All of the things that make science fun. It's also a fascinating illustration of Lenz's Law, Lorentz forces, and other physics principles. Actually, it's a fascinating demonstration of circuits. Switches, capacitors, that kind of thing. Physics. Circuits. Physics. Circuits. Actually, we're both right. They're just two sides of the same quarter. So, I'll go first. Who clocked your flip-flop? I'll go first. Fine. Let's flip a quarter and let that decide. Okay. All right. I call heads. Heads it is. Uh, physics. With all of this high voltage and stored energy, I'm going to need my electrical safety gear. <laughs> Although the quarter shrinker looks complex, it's composed of only four simple parts. A high voltage power supply capable of producing 7,000 volts, a capacitor that can store and release huge amounts of electrical energy, a special switch called an ignitron that releases the stored capacitor energy in one intense burst, and last but not least, our quarter wrapped in a copper magnet coil. Let's see how these work together to produce the giant magnetic pulse that shrinks the quarter. First, the power supply charges the capacitor by placing negative charges on one side and positive charges on the other side. When the capacitor is done charging to 7,000 volts, it's packed full of electrical energy. To get all this energy into the quarter in one powerful burst, we close the ignitron switch to complete the circuit. The negatively charged electrons on one side of the capacitor now rush through the coil to the positive charges on the other side. And it all happens in 40 millionths of a second. You can calculate it. Amazing! Thanks, Dr. Coniglio. Let's watch this again, but slow down a little and zoom out to see what's happening into the quarter coil. When the electricity flows through a coil of wire, it produces a magnetic field around it. That's how you make an electromagnet. When you put 100,000 amps through a coil of wire, you produce a very strong electromagnet, stronger than some of the magnets here at the MagLab. But because that field lasts for only a fraction of a second, 40 millionths of a second, 40 millionths of a second, we call it a pulse magnet. The MagLab has pulse magnets in Los Alamos, New Mexico, with fields upward of 100 Tesla. So what'll happen to our quarter inside this giant magnetic field? As we like to say here at the Mag Lab, let's do the experiment and find out. Of course, we'll need a quarter. I've already put this one inside a piece of PVC and wrapped a wire around it. Let's connect it to the circuit. To contain the explosion, I'm gonna stack bricks around the coil and then top it off with a bulletproof box. We'll set the power supply to 7,000 volts. Finally, we're ready to flip the switch. It's going to shrink the quarter. Get ready. It's going to be loud and very bright. Three, two, one. Smells like a science project in here. Great job, Eric. Hey. I'll hey. take it from here. Hey, what was that? Something about the Ignitron. Now, that was a blast. But if you missed it, let's see it again, this time in slow-mo. Let's open the box. Oh no, I let out the magic smoke. Eric's gonna have to put that back in. The coil's been blown to bits, but the quarter's still here, somewhere. Here it is, hot potato! Okay, here it is. 
let's talk a little bit about the science of what just happened. We call it electrodynamics, the study of changing electric and magnetic fields. Radio, cell phones, x-rays, light, electric motors, they all follow the principles of electrodynamics. Here are the ones that matter to us today. Number one, electric currents create circles of magnetic field around them. Number two is sort of the opposite of number one. A rapidly changing magnetic field creates electric currents. And finally, the link between electricity and mechanics. Moving electrons in a magnetic field get pushed sideways. Let's apply that to our quarter. At the start, there is no current or magnetic field around the quarter. But as we saw, when we flip the switch, current begins to create a magnetic field in the coil. It takes 40 millionths of a second, remember? So during that time, it is a changing magnetic field. Now what did we say happens in a changing magnetic field? A rapidly changing magnetic field creates electric current. Thank you, Eric. The quarter made mostly of copper is an excellent conductor. So electric current begins circling around its edge. We call this effect Linz's law. Now what happens to a current in a magnetic field? It gets pushed sideways. Wise guy. We call that the Lorentz force. If you keep track of all the minus signs in the math, you find out that it pushes inward all the way around the quarter, which makes it shrink. That's it. So the shrinking quarter is the big story, but plenty more went on inside that box. What about the exploding coil? Well, it's just the opposite of the shrinking quarter, because the electric current is flowing in the opposite direction from the quarter. So when the current in the coil gets pushed sideways, the coil breaks apart outward and hits the walls of the box with about the energy of a gunshot. Now about that flash and bang. At home, if you turn off a light switch, the current stops right away. Here, you can't just turn off the current because it's formed a magnetic field and the magnetic field doesn't want to collapse very quickly. So instead, as the coil blows apart, it creates little arcs of lightning between the little bits of coil. The lightning, just like in a thunderstorm, accounts for the flash and the bang. Well, there you have it, the quarter shrinker, a great demonstration of electrodynamics. And circuits. Well, there is one thing we can agree on. If you don't get a bang out of this demonstration, you won't get it from anything.